Hi there and welcome to this week's vlog. This week we are reviewing some of the 2024 fashion shows, some that we've loved, some that we haven't liked so much. Hope, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thanks. So first of all, let's get straight into it. Hope, what show did you like and why? Um, well, the Margiela show is my favourite of all the shows. I feel like you should go first on it because you sent me your notes on it and I think they're great. But for me, John Galliano is the ultimate creative. I love him more than I love any other creative in this world. I think that he is boundless in his mastery to create beauty. And yeah, it was my favorite show. But I want you to like dialogue in the now. Yeah, so I, well, I, my favorite shows so far are the Gucci Men's and the Amazing Margiela. Amazing Margiela, I think, was just such a comprehensive spectacle. Also, the Gucci Mane was cool, like, I loved the clothes, but the Amazing Margiela was a comprehensive spectacle. And I did Google this, obviously, like, I didn't know this, but Galliano's whole theme was inspired by Brassai, a Hungarian-French artist lived from 1899 to 1984. I bet he's seen a lot of changes. Yeah, that'd be a cool period yeah. to live through. Definitely. Anyway, it was based on like Paris's like seedy underbelly and Galliano went for that. And I don't know if you noticed, but, and again, I didn't, I just read it online. Mm. But that, like in the mirrors in the show, they were showing like the kind of actors extras out on the scene as looking like just like gangsters and stuff like that. So, that, so it was meant to just be like a comprehensive all encompassing yeah. thing. And it was meant to be that the catwalk was out on the river kind of thing. Yeah. But I didn't I really see that in the it. reflections and I have watched the show multiple times. Yeah, music was really cool as well. Well, I read, I've read so many pieces about it as well, but one of the pieces I read, it might have been by Mark Giudice for Vogue, and he was saying that the one that they've aired on, like, Margiela's YouTube channel, that isn't all of the music that was on, but I guess oh, they, really? they didn't have licenses for. They also played Massive Attack, and he said something else, and I can't remember what the other thing was, as well as, like, the Adele music, and obviously the live performance that was mm -hmm. there. Um, but I thought that was interesting. Nice, nice. I actually um, liked a couple of Massive Attack songs off the back of it. I was like, oh, dear, that's, mm -hmm. like, really, really good. The fashion industry does some cool tunes. They do, they do. I think, it, for me, it makes such a... Like it's in the same way of like Pat McGrath collaborating with the makeup. I think the music it's like it's atmospheric and it makes everything greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah. I've heard there's music that's just like some kind of like dancey stompy beat for the little models to walk to. And I was like, oh, that feels like a missed opportunity. Yeah. Like, I think that's the thing like to make it like movies. I think that's why we like we are so infatuated with like Hans Zimmer or like Nicholas Winding Ref and like his the amount of music that I listen to based on that have been on his projects. Like yeah. they make them so much greater it's than the sum building. of its parts. So yeah. much so. So I think like it's just I think Galliano throughout all of his work inclusive of his, of his work at Margiela like he makes everything so incredibly atmospheric and I think the music is a really big part of that. Just a side note I totally agree by the way did you see because Ava told me how Pat McGrath got the models faces to look that kind of doll shiny yeah. way yeah that she put like a a face mask from Savers on, just like, and then, and then just on top of the makeup and just like glossed it up to give them that like doll finish. Yeah, I think like funny because I was watching, I feel like like everyone was watching and being like, cause she was kind of being like, and I will tell you what it's going to be, and then like the, the kind of countdown that it's been for her to reveal it. But yeah, I've, I've kind of like read a few quotes of hers being like, oh, and we are working on something that will be so you don't have to like mix and match like 10,000 products to get here. Like we're working on something and of course with the success of the show, they're going to speed it up. But I think that also like for me, like Pat McGrath is the equivalent of John Galliano in the makeup space. Like she is so forward thinking and such an artist that it only made sense that it was them. And it's not the first time that they've collaborated either, but I think it made sense that like for doing something that's like doll-like and futuristic and like dystopian it made sense that it was she was the one to, mm. to to bring that vision to life yeah i thought gwendolyn christie really lent herself oh, to the was, part as well she was like, phenomenal yeah. absolutely amazing i just i just absolutely loved it. i just thought it was such a spectacle mm -hmm. i loved the garments i loved the big padded hips like it was just <laughs> so period that it was dystopian yeah i thought the exact same thing you know thing. even blade runner a wee bit as well yeah i i, I just thought it was really really incredible yeah. padded hips i like the sheer lace and i don't know if you noticed and there's no way to say this to my sister that doesn't make me uncomfortable that some of the models had pubic wigs on yeah. underneath yeah just to make it really all the time yeah yeah 
I really hate saying that to you. That's but, so um, funny. But, um, hey, so, do you know, that's not, that's not something that I enjoy about fashion. Like, I, my degree's in fashion business, if you don't know, I don't know if I've mentioned it before. I think that growing up watching fashion, there's such a difference between fashion nudity and other nudity. And I think, like, the Margiela show had it in particular, and Valentino, which is my other favourite show of the season so far, just so many sheer things where it's like, oh, like, that person's, like, technically, like, or kind of topless but they're not but it's like in fashion it doesn't matter it's not sexualized it's not about that no. it's that this person is wearing an unbelievably gorgeous garment and we're not sexualizing them and it's two completely separate things and i really love that about fashion that it's about the statuesque beauty that's wearing this like piece of art as opposed to objectifying the model i think like i get that it makes you like grimace because you're saying it to me but at the same time i think they're two completely oh, yeah. separate no, things and again i think it's world building like i i love the attention to yeah. detail like I, I just think I have such a delightful escapism in fashion. Yeah. I love the, the, the amount of attention it goes into it. I don't think it can be big enough. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I love how into itself the fashion industry is. Yeah. Like it's seen as the ultimate cool kids gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's some, so funny. It's. Yeah, it is. And like some people reject it. But I think if we're being honest, yeah. because look, every A-list in the world will show up when they call. Yeah, yeah that is true. Like, no one's no, turning them down. No one turns them down. Yeah. No one turns yeah. them down. Is it Lewis Hamilton? Is it Meryl Streep? Is it Bradley Cooper? Everybody comes. Yeah. Everybody wants that ultimate acceptance. Yeah. And I think that, oh, I, I just love it. I love the world building. I know I've said that a few times, but I, I really just thought it was incredible. It was such a comprehensive spectacle. And the garments were incredible as well. It wasn't just a spectacle. Yeah. It, they were just the level of finishing and detail and stuff was just, and there was a real variety as well. No, I completely really, really strength and depth in it. I, I just thought it was incredible. Like, I, I just can't stop watching it. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. And I think the thing is for me, and I think, I think that's the thing about anything that has a high price point, there's a level of elitism. But I think like for me, what the massive difference is between Galliano and any of his shows are, I would say, my favourite designers. He, he is the zenith of, of design, as I've mentioned for me. I think the difference is isn't, his fashion isn't about elitism. His fashion is about the most creative it can possibly be, the most boundary pushing it can possibly be, the most technically experienced couturiers making these clothing. It's not elitism and just that, oh, this will have a high price point. It's just that it is at the absolute zenith of every aspect that it touches in creativity and skill. And I think that that's, there's a difference between being uppity and there's a difference between being skillful. I agree, and I think that's such an I think that's such a good point, and I think that's such an interesting conversation because I would say the flip side of that right now is Balenciaga, where it doesn't look good, it yeah. it doesn't look like it's well made, and it really is a price point for the sake of a price point and yeah. a name, because also then you can put in the conversation that like Rick owns, which is not something you would wear day to day. Mm. But that's not a critique for me. I like that it looks like it's from Dune. I like that it looks like it's from the fifth element king yeah, of the John 100%. Paul Gauthier in the 90s vibes. Mm -hmm. That is an abstract and it is meant to be and it works well as what it is. Like Balenciaga, for example, right now, I'm just looking at it and I'm like... Yeah. Uh, Ava said that she was talking to the manager and the woman said from Cruise that... Sorry, I should have said that. The manager from Cruise, not the manager of Balenciaga. <laughs> Um, would be nice. The manager from Cruise, and they hadn't sold a single item from oh, really? this season's collection from oh. Balenciaga. So I think that if you're talking about elitism for the sake of it, with zero quality, zero taste, like as far away from that as you can be on the spectrum, I'd say that like Galliano stuff is. Yeah, we completely agree. It's so funny when you brought up the example of Balenciaga. That's what I thought is the opposing opposite is Rick Owens. I think that's the thing. Blen Rick Owens is what Balenciaga would like to be. It would like to be yeah. like, yeah, cool and abstract and boundary pushing. But instead it's like just trying. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it, it's left wanting. It's, it's like odd for the sake of it, but not in a cool way. And I yeah. think it's funny because like the actual... OG Balenciaga, the designer, like the Galliano stuff, where it's like the like ultimate couture, like really, really like high skill set pieces that you can, because I said it in that, because I got it from the Balenciaga podcast when I said it in that reel about the LV jacket. He said, I want women to bequeath my dresses to their daughters and their granddaughters because they'll last that long. So that is actually what the OG Balenciaga did. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons he retired. He's like, I, I, he didn't say trends, he used another word. Yeah. He's like, I'm not doing that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing trends. Like, I'm doing what looks good. So it's 
kind of ironic that Balenciaga has strayed so far now that he would be turning in his grave and Galliano is actually doing what he believed in. Yeah, at Margiela and I think that's yeah. the thing as well, like and that I truly love about Galliano is how much he has done like an ode to Margiela in the collection. Like the the fabric, it almost looked like watercolour mask, like Margiela had done that in his early stages of his career. And obviously the way that the models moved in the Margiela show as doll like and obviously that was something that they were going for, but what I thought was quite interesting, it might just be coincidence, is like so many people are like heralding this Galliano show for Margiela as like a big change in fashion right now and kind of like reigniting people's passion. I hate to say it because it brings passion for fashion, but do you know what I mean? Like it's this, again, it's, it's brought it back to this wonderful artistry and creativity. And Margiela's 1990 show was like, had that same commentary around it. And Margiela wanted it to be something different and they had a kids playground in the outskirts of Paris and because it was in a playground the ground was uneven so the models were like walking on uneven ah. ground and I don't know if it is just coincidence because yeah. obviously they were going for a doll aesthetic and so they were walking like dolls or if there was any kind of odes to that because like Galliano has taken so many things like I say like the face masks being a thing or Margiela was really famous and interested in deconstruction and you can see in like some of the overcoats in the collection, the um, the top stitch and it's like long tacking stitches and it's the same in like the suit trousers, the same again like top stitch tacking long stitches, like a contrasting thread so you can really see them and so I think like that's something that I also really love about Galliano and other designers do it of course but like obviously they don't at Balenciaga in the same way but the Galliano really make sure that he is representing the house that he is currently working for and I also think and I don't know if it's just one of those things because again like I you know I, I bow at the altar of Galliano but I feel like with the makeup it, it reminded me of makeup that he's had in his previous shows for his own lines he also I felt like with the shapes of the the nap time waist and like the big kind of like bustly hips like I felt like that was such an ode to the bar suit which is you know made famous by Dior it created the new look um, as it was coined at the time and so I feel like Galliano with this show he wasn't just doing an ode to Margiela but an ode to like his own history throughout fashion but I just think it was like it was just so perfect and I would never have expected it to have the show to have the evolution that it did like those last few pieces when it was very dull like the blue pinstripe mm. I didn't see the show going in that direction but I was like oh my god it was like the most perfect surprise yeah same I went through it on uh, Vogue Runway again just to like yeah. analyse the looks and I was like oh yeah I forgot about that one like yeah. it, it really deviated yeah. I was like oh but by the way just apart from like the showcase part we do some really good tailoring here as well <laughs> yeah it was just a in case you did know, like, yeah. Yeah, one of the pieces... Sorry, by the way, great knowledge. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> I thought I was coming in flossing on my research I'd done for this, but like, oh, great knowledge. You're, no, you're going to take us to the top. That is so funny. No, I was just like seeing just like the art that made me fall in love with art and the people that have been, again, I keep using the word zenith, but I, I don't have a better word to describe it, but just those are like at the top of their craftsmanship. So Galliano was someone that I know more about than like any, any other designer. I, mean, I used to collect Vogue and I wouldn't, you remember I had like the piles at home, yeah, I mean it was yeah. to the alarming extent it looked like hoarders the TV show, yeah, so. but they were just this like, again as Michael's referenced before, like I've grown up poor and grown up somewhere where it was like, I mean like grey cement houses to then the juxtaposition of like these most beautiful spreads that by like Annie Leibovitz and Peter Lindbergh and I, yeah, I just like, like I say about the altar of Galliano, so that's just why I know like, a bit more about him because literally like anything that he's ever done, I've been like, I cannot cover this more. Yeah. It's so aspirational. It's so aspirational. But it's not aspirational just because of wealth, it's no. aspirational because it's another world and yeah. it's based on beauty and acceptance 100%. and like individuality and creativity and um, oh that yeah. can i just piggyback yeah. off at that point i think the thing is as well like yeah galliano is one of the only designers to include plus size models and his collection this year i actually have seen some in other shows but so many models and also i particularly enjoyed it because obviously in this collection there's a lot of padded outfits and it would have been so easy to pick you know like your usual size models and just have the padded outfits mm. but yet he had a range of models and the thing is when you were watching the show you know you didn't go oh well, there's the skinny girl and there's the curvy girl it was just like these people are perfect for this mm. i don't know you said something there that made me think of that now i don't know what it was yeah 
Although one thing I want to say, and because I've seen like one advert of it and then it seems to like I've not seen it yet, there is a show coming out on Apple called The New Look after Dior and yes. Ben Mendes is playing Dior. I am so fucking excited yeah. to see this. I don't know about Ben Mendes. I love it? Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah, he's Australian though, why is he playing Dior? Um, because he can, like I think, yeah. I, I am happy to say that I think Ben Mendelsohn and anything that I've seen him in, yeah. I think he can, yeah. he's successfully done everything and I've saw him play like. Yeah, he's played a lot of different stuff. Yeah, yeah. very different things. So no, I'm, yeah. I'm here for him doing it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Dior. Founders have done a few podcasts on him. Yeah. Really, really good. Very interesting person. I like that, obviously during the war, like the fashion industry only sustained by doing these like really conservative outfits. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, everyone is struggling right now and then yeah. after it he was like, not fucking doing any yeah. of that anymore we're using the most expensive material on as yeah. much as it if we fucking want yeah well that's the thing that's where the bar suit came from like the new look as, as i mentioned that was post world war ii and as that thing if you ever look it up you'll see that oh like the controversial and some and then people were, like loving it because it was ultra feminine because before that everyone had to be utilitarian because of the war yeah. and it was so much fabric which again it was like oh how gauche because it was post-war mm. so i think that's so true of fashion and it's funny because it kind of made me think i was thinking about that with the Margiela show because I feel like a lot of fashion has just more been about like chic and cool and, and has lost some of the artistry and I think that the, this Margiela show is bringing that back and then I don't know but it also made me think about like because of the latex gloves and the use of the goggles I was like is this some kind of like narrative on like what we we have all been through in the past couple of years but kind of making something fashion to it. I don't know, maybe it's not, and maybe I'm just clutching, but I was like, I just wonder, I would like to hear Galliano speak about it, but again, to speak to like Galliano and, and really respecting Margiela, like Margiela didn't walk out at the end of his show as he as he's known as like the invisible man. He wasn't someone that like was trying for fame and I think Lincey that's- I was looking at it too. A lot of people asked if he even existed. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, you couldn't see him. Uh, so Galliano doesn't walk out at the end of the Margiela shows and so I just thought that was like a nice ode to him. But yeah, I would like to hear Galliano speak on it and be like, was that anything to do with that? Or was it just that the latex yeah, clubs looked really fucking cool? That's interesting. I'd like to say that, you know when they come out and they pretend to be reluctantly coming? Yeah. <laughs> I would be the last person oh, to yeah. walk. And I would walk the full length of that and be like, yeah. Give me oh, yeah. like, I, I like all of this. When me. they do, they like see when they do the run through at the end and they hold like the last model's hand yeah, and they walk I like together. That. I really I think like that's that. Nice. I don't like the. Yeah. <sighs> and I was like, oh, like but, why are you doing this? No, at the same time, lots of designers are famously shy, and I think that's yeah. the thing. Just because you're a creative person doesn't mean you're a creative and want to be famous person. I understand. Probably don't be the designer for a fleet fashion house then. No, I don't think that's the case. I no, and I agree. Yeah. Some people love their art. Yeah, that's for the thing, art, yeah. and obviously those people are generally the best at it. Well, that's the thing, and like Margiela left in 2008 because he was like, I didn't like what the industry was like becoming, mm -hmm. and that kind of like trend way and more like it, the invasion into privacy, which is so funny that he's seen that in 2008. And obviously, the world has become a lot more intrusive since that point. Yeah, yeah. It'd be so interesting to hear what he thinks of it now. Yeah. But yeah, I, no, I think I don't know. I could see me being either one of those and being like, oh, because also in that moment, like you're walking out as the crowd receives you and okay great like at the Margiela show apparently everyone was yeah, like it went well. yeah. yeah but could you imagine coming out and it's just a bit like just look warm yeah I would then yeah. do the very modest and back the fuck up yeah I think it's just a culmination of so much hard work I, I would want some recognition for it in person yeah for sure although what I really love is like the Valentino shows they're the only ones that have the couturiers come out like all the people from the atelier yeah. and I think that's really important because I think like when it comes to couture work, the amount of craftsmanship, like there's that level of skill is beyond and like they'll count the hours and it'll be like 1500 hours went into making this one garment and stuff like that. It's like, and it's so funny as well, they're all wearing glasses because if you've ever beaded something in your life, which I have, you will know the strain on your eyes. I'm like, no wonder they all have glasses. It's like tattoo artists all end up with bad backs and yeah. bad eyes. It'll be the same deal. 100%. I've got a Tom Brown skirt through there, I'll show you. And like the separation of the pleating. Yeah, and all that. I'm like, how do they do this? Yeah, like, it's, it's massive. I, 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 it's ridiculous. It it's something so good. that actually see on the Dior website, they have a section called Dior World. Some of it is like in, well, it's like the history of the house, but they'll give you like clips of like the making of certain things in detail. Actually, Dior do it for quite a lot of their accessories on the social media. And I think it's like, it's a really nice thing to see because again, it's like just like, craftsmanship beyond what you could possibly believe and actually speaking of 
Something I really enjoyed in the Margiela show was the making it look as if it had rained on the suits, which they had obviously beaded oh, on the suits. Nice, yeah, and yeah, I thought yeah. it was just such a nice touch. But actually, one outfit I want to point out, I mean, every outfit in the Margiela show, but for the men's, it was more of a, for a couture show, more like leaning on the kind of like wearable. But there was one of the guys and he was wearing a black polo neck and black trousers, a gray coat, and then the red corset. And I was like, God damn, this is the new, like, I want every man to just wear this. Just wear this. Mm -hmm. Wear nothing else for the rest of your life. Wear that every day and I'll feel like life has been made yeah. better. It was exquisite. If I was wealthy enough, I would dress like that every day. Like, I would yeah. dress like that to go for almond milk. Yeah. Um, I'd be living in one of the hours in Paris and I'd be like, right, well, better get better get dressed, yeah. I feel like I always think about, like, you know, when um, the devil wears Prada and all the fashion girls getting ready. I mean, I would yeah. just have to have some Oh, it would be so good. And have somewhere to go that... It's yeah, that, yeah, as yeah. As opposed to like the offices that I've worked in in my life, like it's been in the city centre and they have like a really nice facade, and then you get past the foyer and you're like, oh, ran yeah. out of budget. Yeah, um, disgusting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I think that would be like so nice to be able to dress like that every day. I agree, I agree. Uh, move on to the next one. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Um, no, I feel like I really, again, as I always do, really. But it's just because, you, it's just because you know much more than me, there's no shame in that. No, I don't. I like to say, like, Galleon was just, like, my love. Um, so, <laughs> I feel like it was very dreadful. My love. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's funny. It's a great show. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, um, it's. But no, it's just because I love her. Okay, well, my next one I loved was the Gucci show. Yeah. So, obviously, Sabato Di Sarno, or formerly of Valentino, is now the creative director of Sandro Michel for the 20 years previous. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved this. I love that, which is funny because <clears throat> people spoke about that like, Alessandro Michelle had been more like flamboyant and Sabato de Sarno had kind of stripped it back. I still thought it looked very flamboyant and it was just like, it was just model after model wearing impeccable tailoring. Yeah. I just thought it was, I, I just thought it was so cool. It was not too abstract and, and it was all pretty much ready to wear like yeah. it was bougie but you could wear it all and i just thought it was beautiful i loved that the gloves matched the eggs yeah i just thought that was like such a nice detail yeah so also the gucci rosso you know the gucci red he'd returned that and that was like a pure thing this season he was bringing that back and that was in quite a lot i've got pictures like i'll put it up yeah. that was in a lot of the outfits i really really liked that i liked yeah. that kind of like nod to their heritage yeah it's really the tailoring like the well executed corners and edges oh, again like the kind of power suit vibe do you know what i mean where like your shoulders are just a bit too broad mm -hmm. but it's like a, it was like a throwback but not i really really enjoyed it do you know that like cartoon like batman aesthetic yeah. like i just thought really really cool yeah, I absolutely loved it. Can I say one thing that I didn't enjoy, and this was from the women's show? The Jackie bag and all the vivid colours, mm -hmm. so like the acid green and pink yeah. and stuff like that. I just don't know. <laughs> what, like, I, just, I, just don't I just don't know when you would pick that bag up if you're over 14. But no. that's one critique. I, I, just, I just really, really loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Just when you say the gloves, I, I think I've had a level of indifference for gloves before, but that show, the Margiela show, the Valentino show, I have this new unbelievable lust for a coat with pushed up sleeves and long gloves that gather to meet up. Nice. Never in my life of a care before, but I this, do enjoy a good glove. Really, like it, it's, it's brought me a level. Yeah. Of goddamn, I'm so into that. Yeah, I feel they've been a big feature this season. Yeah, very I've been much liking so. a bougie glove. Yeah. I should also say that the, the show was called Cora, Gucci and Cora, which means still in Italian. Okay. And I liked the fact that it was like, we're still Gucci. Okay, you know, I feel like that yeah, like, like and, I, and I thought, yeah, you are still Gucci. He mixed it up a bit as well with some kind of like rock stud stuff and that, um, which was still really, really nice. I didn't enjoy it as much, yeah. but um, I actually took a note of it here. Yeah, crystal studs, feather finishes, as well as a half button sweater with a glossy hood and a glittering tank top. Was cool. I prefer the boxy kind of tailing. You are someone that prefers the more classic yeah, like, definitely do. aspects of fashion, yeah. but at the same time, I mean to be honest, the same, but I think I don't mind these indulgences within the show because then it's like, it brings nice details, it's yeah. really to change it up so it's And you're flexing your muscles as well, flexing, flexing like yeah. your designer muscles as well, and I think it's good to have a bit of variety within the show. So, yeah. no, I get it, and, and I think that also, like, you, you don't have to buy every piece. Like, you know, yeah. it doesn't, it's not all made for, like, me. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Ah. Yeah, so, no, but I thought that was great. I thought it was beautiful. <clears throat> I thought it was great work he done the... Yeah, the play. At the end, yeah. Uh, and, and I thought it was great, really good music and stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. It's funny what you said about like dehumanising the models in like a good way, where you just see them as a model and just see the garment, mm -hmm. and it's not sexualised. Yeah, it's it, like I, I really don't think it is. I think, and I think that's something that I find like deeply annoying when, like for instance, when Kendall Jenner first wore something sheer on the runway, and then it was like, oh, she's like topless, or you can see her nipples, and it's like. But that's not the, like that's not yeah. the point of this, and I think it's that, like for me, it's that, like how dare you do that to someone? That is not the point of what they're doing. The point is that the outfit is to be shown as the designer wanted, and that might not include an undergarment because they have designed these beautiful lines and they don't want to interrupt it with another layer. And for someone to then objectify someone that's wearing a piece of art, I frankly think go fuck yourself. So yeah, it's, it is one of those things. Like I think it's like. These people are amused in this moment. These people aren't. Yeah. I mean, not that I think people should ever be at the point of being objectified. It's you know, something I find very annoying in many aspects of life. Like, no one's living their life yeah. to be objectified in a moment. But I think, especially in fashion, like that is not the point of the, what that yeah. person's doing at that time. I think it's good though because the industry doesn't treat it like that. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's the thing. And I think it's just, yeah, it's the spectator that's making, it's deciding yeah. to put it through that lens. Yeah. The fashion industry is not in any way putting it through that lens. I agree. And I think if you do put it in that lens, then you just basically are signalling that you don't understand fashion. Yeah, completely. I think so. Right. Now, what other one did you like? So I had a toss up, as it always, they were my favourites. Um, Valentino Couture's The, the Salon. Um, collection. <clears throat> For me it was it was just such a beautiful collection. I know like I've watched some commentary on it and they're like, well, oh, oh you know Valentino was so famously good at blocking colours and you know we've seen some of these shapes before and like yeah totally sure. But on the flip side of that I was just like oh I'm so into it. It was in the same way of I love everything of like the masculine coats over these just divinely feminine dresses or even because it was a coed collection, then like the guys have these like these deep scoops, and even some of the coats, and I was like looking at it, being like, how did you make that? Because it's it's a coat fabric, but it has this deep almost cowl, but I don't see a seam. So I don't know if it was in the back. It must have been. It was just so beautiful, and I was debating between like the Valentino show and the Gautier show, but the last like there's three or four black dresses at the end of the Valentino show, and I literally as I was watching it, I was like. Honestly, bury me in any one of these. <laughs> I want to live in this in perpetuity. They were just so beautiful. They had such gorgeous lines, the sheer, then the applique. It was just, it was like the way the fabric was moving. And I, I have like a deep love of like sheer fabric. And I love it so much because depending on how it's moving at that time, depends on how opaque it becomes, where it's laid. And so you get like these multiple looks in one. and. I just was like, oh my god, I just love this so much. And also they had, um, some of them had veils or they, like the last look had a full like black lace kind of mask. You could still very much see your face, but I just really, I was just like, oh god. Again, it was like, this is when fashion is fashioning. Mm. I love this. I mean, those, those weren't the only looks like the black ones. There was like a plum one. Again, it was sheer top half. And then again, I was trying to work out if it was feathers or if it was like a brushed wool and the sleeves and the skirt and you couldn't actually differentiate between like where her hands were and where the skirt, it was just gorgeous. But yeah, so like the Valentino was my other favourite. I thought it was a really beautiful collection and I always think it's amazing. See when this is such a, it's silly and it's not, it's silly compared to everything else. But when the models have to walk up and down stairs while they're wearing these gowns and heels, I'm always like, God, I'd be having a panic attack and they were doing it. They went up and down a couple of times, but no, the, the Valentino show was my, my other favourite. Nice. Yeah. I have nothing to add. I so, thought that was a very good summation. Yeah. It's incredible. I like that Valentino is consistent. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Just like, the way you really went on. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's not quite as the same aesthetic all the time as like Tom Brown, but like, there is a universe that they live in and they don't try and mix it up from that. I definitely don't feel like Valentino ever sells out. It knows what it is. Yeah, I think and so. Personally, for me, I, mean, I don't know anywhere, not, anywhere near as much as fashion you do, but I'm a fashion purist, and I think that there's things that fashion is, and there's things that fashion isn't. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in deviating from that for clickbait or for sales. 
And I don't really think Valentino does that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. And I also think for me, like that's part of the reason for me why houses have their jewellery lines, their accessory lines, their fragrance lines. Yeah. The pieces aren't necessarily, and obviously not the couture pieces, are not where they make like the money. It's from the accessories that funds that. Yeah, of that. course. And I also think that's the thing, and back to the Margiela show, why I loved it so much. Like The couture show isn't for people to like have all these pieces. You're not going to wear these pieces every day, even you know if, if yeah. you financially could. Is to show what the artist can do, and I think it's it's just such a shame when people don't do the utmost and, and get when they have that opportunity. And I think that's the thing. Like Valentino wasn't like you know like pushing someone else's boundary in terms of like going down that margin mm. route, but they were doing their thing yeah. at the most elite level. So but I think that's the thing. Like Valentino. Is such a like it's a classic, elegant, beautiful brand, and I think that each show the house has very much maintained that to like to add to what you're saying, mm. and I just yeah they don't deviate from it in the best way, but I do think they continue to bring gorgeous shows and shapes, and I really do hope from those like last few looks that were there that we're going to see more of that, and the next show is coming from that because they were just. Yeah. Chef's cast beautiful. Valentino's like the only guy left who's I mean, I know Ralph Lauren, but I don't really put him in the same It's, it's definitely the American brands to the European brands. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I have to say though. No, I, just mean no. in terms of the history No, no, the, same same no, the, no as it is. It's established now is America isn't is anywhere near as old as is you No, it's not. It's obviously some of these the are age. like hundreds of years old, yeah. but like Valentino obviously is like so. he's in the same conversation with LV and Gucci and that, but he is alive. Yeah. Right. Now down to the juicy bits, some that we didn't like so much, and I am going to start. And I have to say, just I want to preface this with, I like some of JW Anderson's ready to wear. I like some of their real clothes. I think he is a talented fellow. <laughs> However, <laughs> I thought this show, well, his shows for this year. Were horrendous. Do you know what it reminded me of? Do you remember when your uni class done a fashion show at that like weird building in air and those girls that played the violin and all stomped at the same time were there? It was like the barn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an aloe or something like that. Aloe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you're from Scotland and you know South Air Shore, there's like a Burns Museum. Yeah. It was when I was in college. We didn't do it. Anymore. Oh, was it in college? Um, it was when I was in college. We had a fashion show there, and it, it was very reminiscent of that. Yeah. So like, not your work, but you know, Thanks. some people were just. My, my work it wasn't great back then. <laughs> Some people were just starting it. You could tell, you know, it wasn't very good. And this is what it reminded me of. Half finished college projects. I just, and can I, can I tell you the backstory of what he said really got his motivation yeah, from? Sure. Well, obviously I sent you the notes. Yeah. I'm going to read this out. <laughs> so he said that he loves Christmas films, but he said he considers the, um, I'm not sure if it's 90s or noughties thriller, uh, Eyes Wide Shut with Nicole That's Kidman and Tom Cruise. He considers that to be a Christmas film. I've actually never seen Eyes Wide Shut because I largely don't watch Tom Cruise movies. Yeah, so I've same. never seen it, same. but I know it as like, it's like a cult classic that I always think like, yeah. if it's on, I would probably watch it, but I've just not scrolled past the kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, so he said that he considers that to be a Christmas film. He also said that Stanley Kubrick's wife used to act, obviously Stanley Kubrick directed it, but that she stopped, but Kubrick would still include her in films because he would put her paintings in oh. films. And G.W. Anderson thought there was something interesting about the theme of being in the background and bringing it to the foreground. Also, on a side note, some of her paintings were like the triptych. Like, Is that what was all Yes, okay? yeah. I didn't dig them, to be honest. And what I've wrote here is <laughs> pretentious reason for a lot of shit clobber. Is that the reason or did you just make that up? And if it is the reason, the clothes are still crap. They're not artistic enough to be artistic and you would never wear them. Well, I thought that was interesting is the psychology of this idea of bringing someone from the background to the foreground. I think if they were wearing those garments, they should stay in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I really hated it, and as soon as I saw it, and it was so funny because somebody actually commented to me, like, um, <laughs> what was they <laughs> Somebody commented, that, like, uh, oh, did you see the JW Anderson show? Like, love to get your thoughts, I'd love to see you in some of those pieces. And I was like, yeah, I, I thought it was disgusting. So, so I, I just thought it was all, and I, and I, I just thought it's like you can give a premise all you want for the clothes being ugly, but they're still ugly. And I think, like, that's so, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they were well made. 
you know, but if they don't look good, and they don't look good in an artistic, like, abstract, like, yeah, dystopian Rick Owens way, yeah, because, yeah. yeah, and it, you would never ever wear them, so what's the point? You can give me a reason all you want, I also think the reason's bullshit. I'm sorry to be so scathing, but I thought the reason was kind of bullshit and pretentious, and I thought the clothes looked like shit. Long pause. <laughs> so I, I really don't know how else to say it. And I like to really try and articulate the nuance of my point and be objective. I just didn't like it. And, and I, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. I don't think the clothes looked like clothes. I don't think it was artistic. I don't think it was ready to wear. I think it was ready to put in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, anyway, sister, go on. What yeah, was the show? Well, yeah, that's what's yeah. I, I have the same least favourite show. Oh, okay, that's funny, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so, like, right, yeah. my top note is this, and I wrote, I don't get it. That's funny! <laughs> yeah, that really sums it up. Yeah, no, that's so true. Yeah, because, so I will say, for, to, to give up because of the negative, I feel like the coats were nice, they were nice coats, that's the thing. J.W. Anderson, they, make, like, they can make nice things. And I think it is of a very nice quality and any of the coats I would happily wear, I thought they were, you know, they were very nice coats. I feel like I'm like over yeah, yeah. applauding the coats cause, because the other things, it, like, it, I didn't get it, it didn't make sense to I me, mean, like, see the Christmas flower, is that a poinsettia? I have no idea. But like, you know, I will check it in the edit and put an asterisk in and say, but you know the flowers I mean, like those red flowers at Christmas time, and that that was like a brooch on the jumpers, and some of them are red and some of them are black. It was like, to be honest, I don't really like those flowers in general, but they're not brooch worthy. They're quite an ugly, a like garish, large shape, and it it was like competing with the clothes. Although yeah, I didn't get, I didn't know that that was Stanley Kubrick's wife's artwork. Yeah. I just thought it was ugly. Um, the prints and like, like some of them looked like, like cats. It was just like it was. There was like, one of a cat. Yeah, yeah, it was like oh, we're doing ugly for ugly's sake, but like that's not interesting to me in any way, and it's not nice in any way for me. And I didn't get. There was a lot of pieces in the collection. It wasn't like they were stuck for um, the amount of like yeah. pieces they had them down the runway. But yet yeah, those shorts, they had these shorts which again I'll let you out a picture that had. Awful. Um, like the satin yep. coming over the top and under the bottom and they had it go down in different colourways which of course I'm Purple chose, and silver I'm pretty sure was one of them. Yeah, yeah. But what didn't make sense to me is like if, if you're showing something in a different colourway it's usually in a part of another ensemble but they just showed it down the runway in a different colourway and it was like that's I don't need to see the different colourways on a runway that's like for your website mm -hmm. so pointless to me and then one of the other things was someone was just wearing like boxers and tights and it was like again yeah, but I, that was already shown on another piece, I didn't need to see it again and it wasn't outstanding in any means, so why am I seeing it again? I just was so, like, generally I'm like perplexed about what the intention was and I appreciate you've read it, I have no more clarity on what it was yeah. that sounds like pompous and self-indulgent and like trying to make a justification for something that I just didn't think was nice. Uh, there's, he said something about, see with the tights and the, the pants, that it was, um, Put in a different spin on what people had been doing for a while now. I can't remember. It was to make it was to make it like less ballerina or less something than what people have previously been doing with the pants now. It's the exact same thing. Well, I mean, I suppose I don't get his point, but like no, underwear and outerwear is like a, a trend that we see sometimes. But again, to go back to again my devout love of Galliano, like Galliano on a show for Dior that like really brought back at that time, like underwear is everywhere, but it was again, it was like gorgeous corsetry. And, you know, it was like again, made to what would have been done in a period time, just layers upon layers and actually meant back to the Dior world. That, on their website they used to have Galliano done a walkthrough of some of the major pieces and one of them was an actual piece and it showed you in the dress it had left one layer of each of the layers of the dress exposed like that's underwear is outerwear that's showing me something in a way it hasn't been done before getting your model to walk in boxers and tights and shoes is like it just felt lazy yeah it felt yeah undone didn't feel stripped back it just felt unfinished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's it. I think those are again, in one way, someone could be like, "Oh, those are synonyms." They're not. Those are two different things. Yeah, and it's that you, you know, less is more, but you have to do more to get less. You can't just do less. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, and I think like that, like you can have a reason for why you're saying this is cool. It doesn't make it cool. Yeah, for me, it does because again, at the end of the day, if I'm, if I'm taking one of those pieces and wearing them, I'm not taking J.W. Anderson giving mm. that speech to everyone saying that I'm wearing an ugly cat net. Yeah, that Stanley Kubrick's wife drew. Who cares? Yeah, like I just, I like my top. Like I just didn't get it. Yeah. JW, I'm assuming we'll never be friends now. It's fine, I'm sure we'll both be fine. Um, next. Hey, what's your last dislike? Uh, can I just say one thing that I did think was cool about the JW Anderson show? Uh, Nicole Kidman spoke some of the dialogue oh, right, okay. in the audio, because obviously she was in that film, which I thought, well, at least you've tried to do something semi cool. That's kind of authentic. Yes, as well. I mean, again, like I say, I haven't seen Eyes Wide Shut, but I know it's. I've, I've seen like, some of the imagery yeah. of it, so that's the thing for me. It was like, you could have pushed boundaries way more. Yeah. I yeah. Well, I just think if you walk around everyone and tell them that Kubrick's wife drew the images, nobody will really care. Yeah, unless you're like such a devout fan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 he's an old director. Uh huh. My mum sometimes does drawings. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't. I, I just don't. I don't think it's as significant as he wanted it to be. I just don't think it was as beautiful as he wanted it to be. And yeah. it does feel harsh because I think it's that thing like. It'd be all about swing and a miss sometimes as well, and it's his vision. So well, so. what I was, like, that I was thinking about this, it's like, I th like we had discussed it before, and like, I think it was the CFDAs, it's like, if you swing and miss, at least you've swung. Agreed. But it almost felt like there wasn't enough of a swing. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, with that, in, in the imagery that I have seen for Eyes Wide Shut, there was so much more that could be done. It could have been yeah. so much more taboo. And I, I suppose that's also kind of strange to me because J.W. Anderson is not a taboo aesthetic. Brand no, it's group. not. So it's weird to like lean into a movie that yeah. does have that. Yeah. But I'm just thankful there was no movie. images of Tom Cruise. Yeah, I mean, God, boring. Yeah. A small old man. I was going to say that the, the models are all quite tall, though, so it wouldn't have been appropriate. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right. That's funny. The next show I didn't love, and I have spoken about this previously on socials, is Louis Vuitton. Mm. If you've watched the reel, you know some of this has already been said, but I'm going to say it again. So, Fidel has said previously that he thinks that LV doesn't really have a staple brand image other than luxury. So there is flexibility within that. And I understand that you maybe don't have an image that you immediately associate with LV, other than luggage and bags. Yeah. But... Because it is, it is a, an accessory brand and it was an accessory yeah. brand. Yeah. But what I would say is that but you are putting on a fashion show and you have the opportunity to put on a fashion show. Yeah. So I appreciate uh, you're still wanting to show your accessories, but you could show fashion yeah. as well. So... My issue is that I disagree with that. I don't think you have ultimately flexibility in what you can do. So the pre-fall when it was like beachy sailor vibe, but not in a cool goatee way, in a, you know, American insurance broker at the pool way was more kind of how I saw it. I didn't like that. I think on a cruise. as well, that more leans into, to me, Pharrell style. Yeah, exactly. The skater, the kind of prince, the, yep. like, you know Pharrell yeah. style, it was more leaning to Pharrell as opposed to it was leaning into like a goatee not nautical thing. Yeah, I completely agree. And I just think it felt like it was the same for this, like the American West theme. The garments were nice and they were well made and that's good, but that's like the point of entry, like that's what that's yeah. that's what we expect, the least we can expect. I just didn't enjoy the theme, I don't think it fits within the LV umbrella and I think ultimately, like I said in Mario, you can't retain your, you know, luxury European fashion house moat if you're just going to pimp out the brand to every theme. And ultimately, I feel like Pharrell is doing what they brought him on to do and that he's making clickbait stuff and he... I think bringing him on was kind of clickbait, if I'm honest. Like, how qualified is he to do it? I'm aware that he's a very creative person, but just because you know about one thing, thing doesn't mean you know about everything. And I get that he is, you know, has a cool wardrobe, but again... <sighs> Those things, you know, that, that doesn't immediately make a marriage that you can be a creative director for one of the biggest luxury brands in the world. I just feel like, yeah, it just kind of gave an air sailing out to me. I, I didn't like it. And, and somebody commented on a thing that, like, they didn't really like it either, but they think it's good that these brands are trying different things and moving out to different images. I disagree. Like, luxury European fashion houses are aspirational and exclusive and opulent for a reason. 
And I think if you just put the brand name on something, even although it's still expensive and really well made, it's the same principle as licensing. Take this brand name, exploit it, you know, for this case views, but also for money. I, it's a solid feel for me. I'm against the principle of it. The American West doesn't fit in. I want to say one positive thing about it. I had to write these down. Um, also, Pharrell featured on all the music for the show with various artists, I'm sorry, but come on. So one of the songs was The Spirit of Saturday Night Live by the Native Voices of Resistance, which is Native Americans, which I, I thought is good. And also collaborated with artists from Dakota and Lakota nations across accessories and even the show's staging and soundtrack. It was headed by creative director DJ Two Bears of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. The artists also collaborated on a speedy bag, messenger bag and travel tote embroidered with Dakota flower symbolism. That's good. Like that is a positive, that's a net positive thing for the world. I've also heard though that some Native American people weren't very happy about it, so... Yeah, I think that's one of those things where it's like, I, you know, like I was aware of that and I think it's one of those things, I'm not versed enough to speak on it, I think... Yeah, same, I don't, I don't know. That thing, given Louis Vuitton or being Pharrell, like someone with a big platform, giving your large platform to anyone, especially Indigenous people, I think yeah. is a positive, but I do not know enough to be like, are we doing this because it's more beneficial for LV or are we doing this because it's more beneficial yeah, for Indigenous I, I, people? I, I agree. And I, I, like, that's it. I'm a white woman from Scotland. I can yeah, hear and, and I, I don't really know anything about Native American history or anything like that any more than I can like get through osmosis through the media. Yeah. Was it giving Native American people a platform or was it further exploiting them? I don't know. I don't know enough to have an opinion. But I just think the American West theme is not congruent with LV in any way. And ultimately, I think it's clickbait, and I didn't like it. And for L being cool, has nothing to do with LV. I do think, like for me, again, for L's aesthetic for me doesn't match Louis Vuitton. No, but I think someone had commented on your Instagram and said like the American West is more suited for like Ralph Lauren, and I thought that's so true. Yeah, I agree. That aesthetic is more as in keeping with them, and I just don't think that it was for Louis Vuitton, like. Again, like I said before, like I get that it's one of the accessories brand, but to make such a strong lean and a direction of American West, but I just, yeah, again, I suppose it's kind of in the way of JW Hanson, like I didn't really get it, I didn't think it suited the brand, and I don't think, I, w I would like to know the reasoning be behind why Pharrell was the person who's chosen to be the creative director for Louis Vuitton. I mean, other than maybe they do just feel like, you know, they're trying to reach a younger market and it's, it's, you know, it's more for like the economic times that we find ourselves in as opposed to like what Enzo Rosso said about bringing Galliano to Margiela. I'll insert his quote, but Enzo Rosso is the head of OTB and was like the decision maker in bringing Galliano to Margiela and basically just that like this is a, a brand at the forefront of like the creative arts of fashion and Galliano is the equivalent of that in the designer so they match up. Nice. I don't think someone would make that correlation between Pharrell and Louis Vuitton because I just don't think the, the square peg and the round hole don't match for me. I don't think it's logical and as objective an answer like that exists for the reason for bringing Pharrell yeah, to LV. Yeah, I think LV. it's more of an economic one. I, it would be my guess, I mean I like yeah. that in a conversation with, but that would more be my guess is that they're looking to reach like but, a younger yeah. audience with that. I think as soon as you do anything that is not traditionally associated with associated with your band, it gets like attention. Because like wow, like that, you know, those are two separate worlds and they've came together to be more than the sum of their parts. That's really cool and like it's it's really cool to be associated with each other. But sometimes things just don't work and I think like, I, I just feel like you water down the brand every time you do something that isn't really congruent with the brand you water it down until it's like oh, okay they'll just do anything for sales yeah. and I think it was the same principle with this show and it's the same principle with bringing Pharrell on board I, I don't really get it and again I mean I know Bernard I know is you know sits up every night waiting on my opinion on how to run LVMH but that's 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 just my opinion that's just mm -hmm. how I feel looking to or at least my guess would be again is like in having Pharrell more like trying to do like what happened with Virgil but like Virgil it's from the industry yeah, yeah. Like, uh, he came up in fashion and he it was that was his life's ambition and I know that Pharrell has always had like a hand in fashion in a way of being like a bit kitsch but again I think there's a definitely like, yeah. 
I, I have a degree in fashion business. I've always had an interest in fashion. I in no way am qualified to be in any of those houses. I'm not even qualified to walk on their floors. Like, so it's, do you know what I mean? It's like, that's cool that you have an interest. That's nice. Your interest yeah. doesn't give you qualification. But I agree. And I think I actually saw someone posting that you're giving Frail too much of a hard time because you're comparing him to Virgil. And I thought that is quite fair. Like obviously, Virgil is a you know a trained professional within that field. I don't mean to like just, but I just mean in terms of I think like what happened with Virgil in terms of him being this young cool designer and being very different in terms of he isn't someone that came up through say Central St Martins and like for instance, Margiela was Gautier's first assistant, and that's how he came to be Margiela and then Raf Simmons sat in the audience of Margiela's 1990 show and that's when he decided he was going to be a designer. Nice, nice. Very good before yeah, that yeah. he was, um, was wanting to design furniture. Virgil didn't have that like, it, like blue blood passion but it didn't matter because he moved in the way to be that, he worked in that his whole life to be there. I, you know, Pharrell's that in music, he's not that in fashion and I think yeah. that's different and I think for me, that's where I see the difference, but I think like the decision makers were wanting to have the same outcome as what they did with Virgil because they think, oh, this is someone that's young and cool and not from that same heritage. Yeah. But I, to labour the point, Virgil wasn't from that heritage, but he spent his life making that his passion. Yeah, I, I, I agree entirely. Mm -hmm. I think like thinking of trying to like, turn it on its head to mix things up yeah. only works if the first principles thinking is there that they can actually do the job. Yeah, and I think also, again, it's like one of those things as well where, like for instance, years ago when Gwen Stefani done that collaboration with Vivian Westwood and um, Gwen Stefani got loads of like notoriety for it, but the 80, 90 plus percent of that was Vivian Westwood. Yeah. Yes, Gwen Stefani was a creative collaborator, but she wasn't the inception of any of that and I think that Pharrell could probably be a wonderful collaborator mm. with someone that like that is their stock. Yeah. I don't think he is the creative director. I think he could assist in any shows that they would want him to, but again I think there's a difference. Oh I I, I agree entirely. Not to be unbelievably scathing of Pharrell. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I'm sure he's sure he's wonderful. I just want to all just that just made me think of like Skepta. Like Skepta's doing everything right now. Oh, I see, I see. Like he's back doing music. He's doing fashion. Oh, yeah, he's doing fashion to like a legit level. I'm oh. sure. I'm pretty sure Naomi Campbell walked for him because they were going out for a wee while. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that and he's know. just directed a film. Oh. I'm like, does, does Skepta know. not sleep? Like, yeah. But if you give him a follow, he's very busy. He's booked and busy. Yeah. That's so funny. I yeah. Know that. I had to pronounce this girl's name because I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So it's Celia and it's Greek, so I'm thinking it's Kritharite. Yeah, I would think so, yeah. But I'm not sure. Anyway, okay. any other dislike is hers. Again, I'll, I'll put this collection on screen, but it was either like titled like Deep Sea or Under the Sea. I think it was Deep Sea because Under the Sea is like Disney. Yes. Although, uh, my, the mermaid, yeah. my critique and also on one of the comments under the YouTube video mm -hmm. of the fashion show was this is Disney done poorly. And I think that person was. Accurate. Yeah, pretty concise, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the show started out, and this is what was so strange to me as well. Like, the show started, and Naomi Campbell was the first one to walk. And at first, I was like pleasantly like, oh, that's that's a nice dress. And I was honestly just so taken by Naomi Campbell because how can you not be? Like, the woman doesn't age, like, she is a great <laughs> painting in her, yeah. like, her loft. Um, she was just stunning. Oh, does she? No, I'm joking. Oh, okay, sorry, I thought you meant like she had that, done that to like symbolise that. No. I was like, oh, that's so cool, I love that. That's yeah, so funny, no, I just mean because... Oh, right, yeah, I was like, oh, that's so cool. That's How so dark. Yeah. I said, that's so honest when you thought I was... Yeah, 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 I just thought it was like really cool, like, haha, you don't age. That's yeah, so funny. Yeah, sorry, go on. I, I wish she, I hope she does yeah. that, it was funny to me. So, like that, like that dress I thought was perfectly nice. Then Candice walked, I thought that dress was perfectly nice. The yellow dress that Coco Rocha wear, I, I, you know, I was neither here nor there. Luckily, she can pose in anything because the dress didn't move properly. Everything like else, I, I, perplexed because it, it very much looked like it was done in a rush. It because it didn't look executed well, and I know that brand does bridal wear, and I've seen their bridal, and it's like it is executed well. So I know that the the ability to do so mm. is there, but it, it wasn't in this execution. And then it's very much in the same way that I had the commentary on our CFDA videos when I compared Coco Rocha and the Christian Siriano dress versus like the Lala Anthony. It was like the Coco Rocha was theatrical and the Lala Anthony was costume. To me, this like 
deep sea theme was far too literal. Like they literally had like a starfish bikini. And oh yeah, I, I, I hate stuff like that. Yeah, it just wasn't. And then even the fabric choices for me, it was like, you know, it was the high shine foil, and it was like I get that we all like understand this intellectually, it's like we see that, and then clothing, then we go, it is meant to represent under the sea, but or like that's the inspiration. But for me, it was like. If you looked at the first piece of the Gautier collection and it was this very like reflective fabric, it should have been that. That was giving leaning nautical as we know Gautier does, but not so like heavy handed and, and, and caution and literal. Yeah, because they're still clothes at the end of the day. Yeah. And, I, and I think like, again, I could bring up Rick Owens because it's like, because a lot of it like, you know, it's not ready to wear, but, but it's like, but it, it gives a perfect it's example still of stylish. Yeah. It's, you know, it, whether just an abstract theme, which doesn't, like, I understand that this is true to the theme, but it doesn't look good. And if it doesn't look good and you wouldn't wear it, why are we here? Yeah, that's it. And also, like, to mention the Gautier show again, like, the Gautier show did have such, like, nods to Nautos, as, again, his brand does, but they were done very well. And it was like, oh, that's your inspiration that's not your literal interpretation and again two very different things mm. for me and yes yeah, as, as I was watching the show I was just like what's going on it very much felt like, like a sweet 16 prom party like just yeah. like not good not well made the beating was so again again it's like I, I get that you're doing under the sea but it's like yeah. too fucking much she just comes out in the end in one of those like old school divers outfit <laughs> I was just, yeah, perplexed. It's just that, like, you've taken this far too literal and the execution looks poor. And so for that, again, it's one of those things of, like, when I'm comparing and contrasting that, again, to the Gautier show, it's like, this is so beautifully made. These are the best fabrics that could have been chosen for this. These are fabrics manipulated in such a beautiful way with technique and skill for this overall like silhouette or movement or contrast. Gautier had all of that and this show had absolutely none of it. And I'm comparing those two because they have the nautical themes. Yeah, so that was just, it was just, just really disappointing. It was just like a, oh, kind of slightly died with a one par just it could have been so much better. I think that's probably the most disappointing when you can't really tell what it is or what it's for. And and like that, like yeah, but this is the theme and it's like, you know, but you've you've leaned into the theme too much. The theme is there to serve the garments at the end of the day. Yeah. Not the other way around. Otherwise we would all just wear PPE. That's so funny. You know, yeah. I think but I think but I mean it's probably easy to yeah, but I mean, it's probably easy to let it run away with you when you're doing it. Like, oh, starfish, that's cool. You know, like, yeah, I can see why it happens. I don't know. So I think it is one of those things. See, when you start to do something creative, it's so easy to get such tunnel vision. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things. If I was that designer, like, I think it's a shame. But I would have like produced that show and then seen the goatee one and then been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm. We're not I, showing this. Yeah, I, like I'm, I'm like dying inside. Yeah. Because it was like, oh gosh, like um, Simone Rocha for um, Gautier, because they, Gautier has a guest when they do the couture lines. It was so beautiful, like it was so beautiful, like the Amelia Grey dress, it's like all black in the front and then I wasn't expecting the back and this gorgeous bodice, but like the fabric choices, it would just would have made so much more sense for your deep sea collection to have made those choices and it just, yeah, I was like, why Why did you let your seven-year-old go to the garment shop <laughs> and pick out, like, yeah. the high reflect of bright fabrics and, like, these ugly beads? Just, it was like, wrong decisions were made. But, yeah, like, it, like I think it is easy when you start something to get tunnel vision and then forget it, like, the other things that are out there and that are possible to do. And I think that, like, yeah, she, like, started on and needed to like pull back, like the kind of time spent fallacy maybe was there. Mm. It, it wasn't, you know, they shouldn't have continued to move in the right direction, but I do think it really looked rushed. And so, I, I mean, again, I'm just like kind of hypothesizing here, but I do think like the execution looked really rushed and maybe it was really rushed and they shouldn't the, the, have made it. They'll probably, I mean, there must be some times as well when people get close to showtime and have an epiphany, like, I've leaned into this team too much mm -hmm. and this stuff doesn't look great but I have to submit something. Yeah. So 
I mean, surely, I mean, as a human, and also like creativity is completely subjective and speculative, and it must be easy to run away with a theme, especially if you maybe don't have that many other ideas, and you're like, well, this is the theme that. Yeah, carrying on with the theme. Yeah, yeah, I can see why it's difficult once you've nailed the colours to the wall, and maybe it's also one of those things again, like having my, I mean, very like minuscule experience in it. It's so easy to like draw a beautiful flashing illustration and then when you try to actually make something you're like oh yeah yeah so I don't know how to do that mm. that's very easy to do but like I say I just think it, what, what I think kind of so jarring about it and like why I'm so perplexed is like I've seen her bridal wear and there has been nice fabrics chosen and I, they do look well made I mean I've not seen them in person but like from the images so I just think it's so strange it was like the did everyone just like up and leave and you, you had like someone of my skill level a sewing machine make it for you because I, 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 I couldn't have even made that good but do you know what I mean it was just like Do you think it's a case of stepping out of her lane too much? No, I, no because like the other shows like I, I've never been that poor I really feel as if almost like something happened in the background and mm. they made this not, <laughs> not be good. executed yeah. well yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a flat note to end on, maybe we should have done the bad ones first and ended on a strong note. I mean, well, other good ones, are, for good notes, the Scaparelli show. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my god. I oh my god, god. yeah. The only Agreed. thing though that I thought was, well one, I thought the technology baby was really fucking creepy. But I love that show, the one that Irina is wearing with the black dress, with the beige, and I, again I was like, I was trying to look at how that was pleated. Actually that reminds me, you see like the beige top to shows like the hat and the big jacket and the Margiela show I don't know if it was all pin tucks oh my god that was exquisite as well but the Scapadelli show loved that I thought it was gorgeous and the big like angel kind of wing frontage yeah, it was more yeah, yeah. like masonry than it was a dress it was mm. gorgeous the only thing that I thought was really funny in that I really loved the piece that Carly Kloss was wearing that has like the high sides there was quite a few bits of that but one of the models was wearing something that had the high side and it had like a window in it and like then something oh on it oh my god that's so funny I, was, like, I didn't notice that, that was just, I just that. thought that was so funny to yeah. me but that show was gorgeous and actually that's another comparison so Obviously they're very famous for those like ornate skeletal structures but then in the show that I, I didn't like the deep sea they literally just had like a like a lobster on the back of like a cropped mm. light blue jacket and again yeah. it's that thing of like the difference between like fantasy and theatrical and like literal yeah. costumes. Like, yeah. It was, it was giving very yeah. pantomime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that would be another show I would give like a massive one. Yeah, you know, same, I loved it. And again, I watched it and I was like, this is fashion. This is, yeah, I loved it. Um, Thank you so, so much for watching. Hope, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Continuing to have a far more technical knowledge than I will ever hope to achieve. You're literally studying fashion books right now. I am, I am. And um, maybe when I'm 150 years old, I will have as much knowledge as you have now. Not at all. And again, this is just because this is time spent. I have, yeah, you've got your reps in. Like I would have been infatuated by fashion and I, like in the same way that I watched Galliano, it's like he made me fall in love with fashion the way that Tarantino made me fall in love with movies and I started early so I nice. have like I've got decades in of loving this stuff. Nice, nice. So I just mean that I should no, no. spend it's nothing else. I understand, I understand. But anyway, thank you for being our resident expert and we will see you guys again soon. Thank you so so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.